Hello again, YouTube. Welcome to yet another tutorial mirroring Brandon's uh, 3ds Max tutorials over on Freddy W2. This is uh, render prep, getting ready for compositing. Um, episode six. Let's go hop on over into Blender and get ready with this. So over here in Blender, this is what we left off with last time. And basically, we're gonna set this up to composite in After Effects. So first off, what we're gonna do is we're gonna See, go over to our render layers over here and uh, I don't know you can rename this objects or basically um, this is going to be the objects you're compositing into the scene and that's going to be over here um, these boxes are like your layers uh, so much like in Photoshop or After Effects um, basically we're only going to render out layer 1 and we're going to mask with this bottom layer over here, which we're going to put our shadow pass in, this background layer. So we're going to move this background layer uh, with hitting M down to layer 2, and just view that so it's the same. Um, add another render layer, and then uh, only render the bottom one, and render out the shadow pass. Uh, you can get rid of the Z pass, just save some buffering in time. We're not going to use it, um, as well as the shadow pass that was selected on this. Okay, and so basically what's going to happen is, well, we can see this right now. Uh, let me uh, kind of knock down the sampling to a smaller number so we can uh, get this down quickly. But um, you see when we're rendering out, it's going to render out two separate passes, one with just the balls and a clean alpha channel with nothing in the background. And then it's going to also render out uh, the background with just the shadows. And here we can see that in a second once it's done rendering this. Here we go, it's going to start rendering the background. And as you can see here, um, this we can uh, view just the... Uh, render layer, oh, I don't name it, shadows, and uh, the render layer with the shadows, and we can see the passes in it, and let's go ahead and select shadow pass, if it lets us while we're still rendering here. Um, but as you can see here, we're still rendering out the shadows on the walls, and this is a problem because when we come to compositing, it's going to render, we're going to put the shadow back over our clip background, that's not what it's supposed to look like, this is like a preview of what it might. And so we have to get rid of this. In uh, 3ds Max they have a material that gets rid of this, uh, the matte shadow material, but in Blender we do not have that. Uh, in this case you could maybe get away with just rendering out a, um, a plane, uh, just covering the bottom, just to get this pass in a separate layer, but I'm going to show you a way to do this. It will work in every situation. Um, 100% it will slow down your render time so so because you have this you have to divide out the shadow that's um, that's on these walls and the way we do that is by duplicating this scene making a full copy you can exit out of that um, and then just deleting um, the balls now once again like you can make a copy and link the objects and won't have to do this every time you re-render to make sure all the settings are copied over. Um, and then it's gonna give you the same, it's a full copy, just delete the objects uh, layer and you should be good to go. Uh, hop back on over into your scene. I have a whole bunch of just uh, logging each tutorial. Uh, Alright, so you have that. Um, and then go ahead and hop on over into the compositing uh, node, node compositing uh, workspace. Uh, go ahead and select uh, the scene compositing. Uh, it's like the little pictures. Use nodes, backdrops. Um, my nodes, it didn't pop up in any nodes for me, but basically what you'll have is a render layers node connected to an output node, a, com a composite output node. And basically this is just your different files. Um, 
go ahead and select from the bottom there your render passes uh, render layer shadow and uh, basically we're going to get a clean shadow output from this add a mix node mix to add then um, add an invert node and connect the alpha to the invert and plug that into the top socket and connect the shadow to the shadow pass to the bottom socket here and you can see in the little preview that we're gonna get a pure shadow pass in that um, now go ahead and select all of that uh, duplicate with shift D and just change the scene to your second scene without the objects um, so that's the scene without any uh, without any shadows from the objects or the shadows on the walls we're gonna add another mix node um, plug it, that into the bottom I believe and plug that into the top um, and then we can add set that to divide and go ahead and uh, render out a pass with maybe more samples than just five. Let's do 20. Um, this the samples get rid of the uh, kind of speckly colors, um, the noise. The more samples, the cleaner the picture you'll get. And make sure you do that in both of your scenes. And just render it out. I'll be back with you on the other side of this. All right, so we're back on the other side of the render. Um, and we have each one of our passes. We can go take a look at them here. Uh, if you hold shift and control, you can quickly view everything with the viewer node. And it'll pop it in the background there. You can scroll down and you can see each one of these. Uh, this is the shadow pass. You can hop down here and make sure you have the right render layer selected. Um, and you can see that this shadow pass only has the shadow on the wall and so what we're gonna do over here is we're gonna divide that out alright so what you're gonna do is you're gonna add um, a blur node uh, shift a filter blur um, and uh, the blurriness to four pixels on the X and Y and duplicate that pop that on both of them um, then uh, plug the shadow pass from your shadow plug the shadow pass from the uh, pass without the objects onto the bottom and the one with the objects onto the top uh, divided by a factor large enough to get rid of most of it and then most of the shadow on the wall uh, as you can see here there's still speckles so then you do a despeckle uh, lower the threshold and maybe um, put the factor up a little bit higher all right, and so that will take care of your shadow pass. Now, um, you can go ahead and duplicate uh, one of the render layers and select uh, objects on the scene with your object layer pass. You go ahead and view that with shift, uh, or control shift and click. And you see it's just pure alpha, so um, what we're gonna need is we're gonna need a uh, output node and then uh, file out and you can just pop your uh, you just pop your render layer right into that now um, I'm gonna render out in a uh, uh, open EXR file format uh, full float RGBA uh, and I'm going to put a zip compression on that. Uh, I believe that's readable by After Effects. If it's not, we're going to change that by next time. And I'll tell you. Um, I'm going to go ahead and increase my render size for the final one to like 50. Uh, that will take a little bit to render for each one. And I'm going to go ahead and apply that to this side, also the other scene. Um, lossless RGBA with 50 sample now over on this um, 
I'm gonna go uh, select a file path for this. And that's gonna be over here. As object. Accept. And then this output, because it's connected to our shadow, will be under uh, the same place in shadow. I'm gonna accept. Um, everything is nice. We're gonna go ahead and render it out. All right, that's it for now. Uh, see you next week. Uh, I'm editing or compositing this in After Effects, and uh, I might potentially make a compositing tutorial for Blender for those of you who do not have After Effects. All right, and uh, thanks. Subscribe if you like this. Make sure to check out uh, the original tutorial over on the Freddy W channel by Brandon. Um, make sure to check out his Twitter. If you have any questions, you can go ahead and find me a message over Facebook or in the comments. And besides that, or not over Facebook, over YouTube. And besides that, no.